Good afternoon. I wanted to take a few minutes to explain some concepts in JavaScript. If you look at what you see on the screen here, I have a folder for Tutorial 10, and I'm looking at the mpl.htm document. You might want to pause this presentation and then open that folder so that you have these, um, these four documents showing on your screen. Go ahead and pause now if you need to. Assuming that you have all of the files open, I've already made a few changes to the file to implement some JavaScript code. For example, if you looked at the Monroe Public Library sheet, you'll see that in the first row of our table, I added an email address for Katherine Adler. And if you look at the code, starting from the top with our HTML code, you'll see that I've added a function, a JavaScript function. Notice that I put it within the header identified the script type and then hid a lot of uh, a lot of the code here using the comment uh, functionality of HTML and I'll explain that shortly then I added a JavaScript function and you'll see the name of the function is show em the parameter that it accepts is uh, the variables name is username notice that the n is capitalized it identifies a number of variables and then actually um, write some information to the screen. Now I want to scroll down to the table and if you want to look at the screen and see where I'm scrolling. And so here we are in our row and then we are in the third column of that row. I created a scripting area and notice that where I call that function the code is commented out. And so just as in your .NET environment you can comment out an entire line by starting out with two forward slashes. And in Notepad++, this is indicated with the text turning green. Now, take a look at the next line of code. In this location within the web document, in other words, on the first row in the third column, I want to write Katherine Adler's email address. And so, I'm using the code document.write, and then I open the parameter area and I'm asking for a JavaScript to literally write what's in between the double quotes. And then I end the parameter list by closing the parentheses, and then insert a semicolon at the end of the line to indicate the end of a JavaScript code line. And so with this code in place, I'm just going to make sure that I'm saved, and I am. You'll see that in the top left corner. And if I click on my Firefox page, and press F5 to refresh it, there's Catherine's email address. Now notice when I point at this email address, it doesn't turn into a link. What I would like to have happen is, down here in the bottom where you see done in the bottom left corner, I would like when a user points at that email address to have the email address turn into a hyperlink and the display uh, the typical HTML mail to code. And then assuming that uh, the user has an email client installed on the computer, they could click this link and then open a new email and have this email address inserted in the to field on the email form. And so let's see how we would do that. So first, I'm going to comment out, I'm going to rather uh, enable the function that I created above, and then I'm going to comment out the document write uh, that I inserted previously just to test to see that I was writing in the correct location. And then I'm going to look at my function. The function's already built. And so first, my function show em is going to receive the username parameter. Now I'm passing, if we just take a moment to look again, I'm passing in this person's the first part of Catherine's email address, C Adler. Then I'm taking that information, I'm going to store it in a new variable. I don't have to do this, but I wanted to show you how you could take information from one variable and then store it in another. Next, I create a variable emdomain with the at sign and the mpl.gov text. Notice that's enclosed in double quotes. And you can see that's the case and it's a valid text uh, assignment because it's all slightly grayed out on the screen. Next. I create the em link variable and then assign the username and the domain to it. Now when I'm testing, if I have issues, and I typically will have issues with my document write, because you'll see that I have a number of double quotes and single quotes listed therein. 
when I have uh, this type of code to write, I almost always will create a document.write line of code just to test that my variable is, has assigned properly. And so I'm going to comment this line of code out as well as this one. This line of code, and then I'm going to enable the testing of my variable. And so I'm going to save. And then I'm going to press F5. And notice that I still have my email address listed here. So that tells me that this function was able to write the email address. And that's the output of this of calling the function from within my uh, the field within my table. So now I know that my assignment works. I'm going to put myself back to the position I was in a moment ago. And look at my code. And so I'm asking JavaScript to write this embedded HTML code. And notice that my parameter starts with, and I'm going to click within the parameter list, I start with the double quotes. And then I end with double quotes before I finish my parameter closing parenthesis. So in other words, all of the text within the double quotes should be interpreted as an HTML line of code. And so I open up an anchor and then I assign it a mail to and provide it an email address. Then, before I close my anchor on the third line, I insert the email address that I want to be set as the mail to. I'm going to save these changes and then look over and press F5 to refresh. Now notice that the email address is refreshed and when I point at it, it turns into a hyperlink. And then if you look in the bottom left corner of my browser, you'll see that it shows the proper mail too.